So today marks one of the biggest, most transformational days in the history of gaming. And I'm not just saying that. I mean, technically the biggest day is going to be in like seven days when the deal closes. But today is the day when it's basically settled, which is that the FTC has failed to argue their points in front of a judge, meaning that they're pretty much cleared and good to go as far as the U.S. is concerned. The deadline for the deal is July 18th. There are still a couple of like lawsuits and stuff that in theory could clog this up in the States, but it's extremely, extremely unlikely that anything of note really happens after this. And as I've told you guys before, often the best way to know whether or not a deal or a merger or acquisition is going through is simply to look at the stocks involved because stock traders and investors on Wall Street that have billions of dollars on the line are doing their homework. They're paying people to listen in to court hearings and all this so that they can have an edge on other traders and know whether or not this is going through or not. And as we've seen just today, the deal is actually causing the stock to spike up a lot. You can see this morning it was trading at 82 bucks a share. Now, after this decision came down, it shot up all the way into the low 90s, which if you recall, the original offer from Microsoft was $95 a share. So effectively, in really simplistic terms, the closer to $95 this is, the more likely and more certain it is that the deal is going through. Because in a perfect world with zero risk, this would be 95. They offer 95, it's gonna close at 95, the stock is worth 95 a share, easy peasy. But the only reason it's not is because of risk and the potential for this not to go through or for the price to be adjusted or whatever else. And as you can see, we're already quickly approaching 95. And as the next few days go by, I wouldn't be shocked if this got up to 92, 93, 94, as the deal gets closer and closer to being finalized. But what exactly happened? Because everybody's been talking about this deal, but it seems like very few people actually know what was going on or what the major concerns were. Well, there's two things going on. I've heard a lot of people mix up. On the one hand, there's the CMA. The CMA is the group in the UK. They handle a lot of regulatory stuff over there, and they evaluated this deal and initially declined to endorse it and even rejected it saying that they had massive concerns related to Microsoft's cloud gaming platform and that acquiring Activision Blizzard would give them an unfair advantage because they have this cloud gaming infrastructure that other companies like Sony and PlayStation don't have. On the other side, we have the US and in the United States, we have the FTC that's evaluating this deal and they originally sued to block this deal from going through. However, after five days of testimony and an extended consideration time from Judge Corley, we got the decision that dropped down. And basically this decision backhands everybody that was trying to make really lazy arguments as to why this deal shouldn't go through. Just to be clear, I don't like that Microsoft is able to just come in and pay cash for massive companies that fundamentally change the gaming landscape forever. I don't love that, but it's a reality of our situation that that for one can happen. And as far as I can tell with my degree in corporate finance, speaking to a lot of my professors about this, it seems pretty clear and cut and dry that this deal made sense. There is no antitrust concern that really holds up in a court of law. As the saying goes, there's what we know, there's what we feel and believe, and then there's what you can prove in court. And in court, they just weren't able to demonstrate any of these concerns that they have regarding Microsoft and acquiring more gaming companies or anything like that. As stated in the decision by Judge Corley this morning, Microsoft's acquisition of Activision has been described as the largest in tech history. It deserves scrutiny absolutely agree. It deserves scrutiny. That scrutiny has paid off. Microsoft has committed in writing, in public, and in court to keep Call of Duty on PlayStation for 10 years on parity with Xbox. They go on to say it made an agreement with Nintendo to bring Call of Duty to Switch, and it entered several agreements to, for the first time, bring Activision's content to several cloud gaming services, not just their own, such as NVIDIA's and some that are specific over in Europe. They say the court's responsibility, while narrow, is to decide if, notwithstanding these current circumstances, the merger should be halted, perhaps even terminated pending resolution of the FTC administrative action. They go on to say the court finds the FTC has not shown a likelihood that it will prevail on its claim that this particular vertical merger in this 
specific industry may substantially lessen competition. To the contrary, the record evidence points to more consumer access to Call of Duty and other Activision content. The motion for a preliminary injunction is therefore denied. And again, this is a big deal because while the FTC can, in theory, appeal this decision, it's unlikely that that would be taken up by further higher courts. And even then, there's questions of timing because this deal is set to close within basically a week from today. And listen, even if you are a PlayStation gamer and you are looking at this like, oh my God, this would suck for Microsoft, for Xbox to own Diablo, Overwatch, like all of these games, it would just blow. I understand that sentiment. And like I said, I don't like that this deal is going through. If I were the God Emperor of mankind, I would not allow deals like this to go through. However, that's unfortunately for everybody, not the world that we live in. And as far as I can tell, looking at this as skeptically and level-headedly as I can, there just isn't a lot of there there in this argument against this acquisition going through. All of the arguments were very, very bizarre because when PlayStation was making initial arguments against this deal, it was describing how Microsoft would start to do all sorts of things to make games exclusive to consoles, to take games away from players on other consoles which is perhaps a valid argument, but PlayStation is probably the worst company on earth to make the argument that that's not okay because they've been doing it for two decades <laughs> unimpeded and everybody loves their exclusives. So nobody seems to really mind. It's just that now Microsoft is going to start playing the same game. Now PlayStation is getting really upset. I, I understand why it's a big deal for their business. It sucks, but it's just a bad argument, it, it just is. And other arguments against this deal going through didn't hold much water either, such as saying just broadly that this would lessen competition. To the contrary, as far as the court is concerned, previous to this deal going through, if you wanted to play Call of Duty, you needed to buy a $550 console from either Microsoft with an Xbox or from PlayStation with a PlayStation 5 or buy a PC for even more than that. There was a big barrier to entry. However, owned by Microsoft, Call of Duty is going to be brought to xCloud, to Nvidia's GeForce Now, to all of these other cloud gaming platforms, which don't have that upfront cost. Whether that sounds good to you, personally to me, cloud streaming a competitive shooter sounds horrible, but whether or not that's practical for our particular play styles or preferences, that does increase the amount of players that can access these games. It just does. You don't have to like it. It doesn't have to be you that it now appeals to, but there is a population out there that previously couldn't play these games that will now be able to with cloud services, thanks to Microsoft's cloud infrastructure. It, it's just a fact of the matter as far as the court is concerned. So all of these arguments against the deal just don't really hold up. And then you have to ask yourself, okay, well, if none of these arguments hold up, why are we fighting it? Like, what's the problem? Why is this not just going through? And that's pretty much where the judge landed. And that's why pretty much every legal analyst that I've looked up and been following on this case has said, we don't really understand why there's all of this hullabaloo about it. It's a big acquisition, sure. But on paper, it's a slam dunk. It doesn't make any sense for this not to go through. Now, as for where things go from here, it seems that the deal is going to close probably by the 18th of this month. So within just a week or so. And after that, we probably are going to see a very slow adjustment. You'll see some games like Diablo 4, I'm sure will come to Game Pass day one. You're gonna start to see stuff like that happen, exclusive bundles available for Game Pass subscribers and Call of Duty and things like that. But it's going to be probably a year or two before you start to really notice big changes. And as for whether this helps the games and studios in question, only time will tell. I've said many times I'm not impressed with how Microsoft manages their studios. I don't think they've figured that out yet. And I think they have a lot of work to do before they can consistently release quality titles. So I would not hold my breath for all of a sudden these games to just become really good or really polished. I would not expect that to happen whatsoever. 
because fundamentally these are the same companies. They're just now going to be owned by another group. Instead of being owned by shareholders, they're owned by a bigger company that has shareholders. So it's just two sides of the same coin. But anyway, I wanted to get this video out there before it got too late. Offer my thoughts on all this short and sweet TLDR. I'm not thrilled that this deal is going through, but I'm not obtuse enough to think that this should have been blocked by the court because as far as I can tell, there was no legal basis to block it, at least according to U.S. law and U.S. antitrust concerns and regulations. It just wasn't there. So it seems as though the deal's going through. Even if the CMA refuses to adjust their ruling, which as of right now, a couple of minutes before I started filming, they announced that the CMA and Microsoft are meeting on final resolutions to some of their concerns or what they call remedies, which basically is just, let's come to an agreement to get this thing across the finish line. So it seems like the CMA is going to lift any concerns or any bans that they have on the deal. But even if they don't, I think Microsoft pushes it through and they'll just publish Activision games in the UK through shell companies and other distributors to get around the regulatory troubles, because why not? The deal is worth $70 billion. There's no way they just walk away because the UK is throwing a hissy fit. So I would fully expect this deal to go through. I've had a feeling that this would go through for a while when the CMA stood up and tried to block it. There was a lot of concern and anxiety over time that settled and then the FTC stepped in. But I think pretty much from the moment that the hearing started with the FTC, like two weeks ago or whenever it was, everybody knew that this probably was gonna go through. That's why Jim Ryan didn't even show up. It's why a lot of the testimony from the FTC lawyers was hilariously bad. They had to swap out lawyers and all sorts of stuff. It was just a mess. And frankly, it's because this whole debate, this whole debacle was never really based in legitimate regulations or laws concerning this whole acquisition. It was always tied up in other things such as corporate politics. And as a result, the system worked over time. It settled the issue and everybody came to an agreement. Whether you like it or not, this is allowed in our system and it just is what it is. But yeah. The games industry is changing a lot today. Well, probably in about a week, but effectively today, things are changing a lot. So let me know what you think of the whole deal of all of this stuff going down in the comment section. I'm very interested in hearing. I'm going to go paint some Warhammer miniatures I have behind me because my buddy Caleb got me into Warhammer and I, I need help. This is me crying for help, guys. I'm hooked and... It's expensive. So much love, everybody. I love, <laughs> I love you dearly. Like the video, subscribe, share, whatever. I'm just glad that you watched it. Much love. I'll see you soon. Hugs and kisses. Bye-bye.